Jumping high is an important skill for a lot of sports, and in certain circles of the internet, it's even become its own niche competition. The standing vertical leap is one of the critical tests at the NFL Combine and has long been a gold standard for assessing human leaping ability. So who jumps the highest? You might think a dunk legend like Michael Jordan would own the vertical leap record, but the highest jumpers actually aren't basketball players. And football players actually have the highest vertical jump. Even which, better than basketball players. Yeah, most people would think, well, basketball guys jump more, so they have the highest. But, you know, football players are used to starting from a static position, which is what a vertical jump is. The NFL Combine's top leaper, Gerald Sensabaugh, once hit 46 inches. And then there's the extra inch higher that USC football player Josh Imatorbebe was once measured jumping. So what's the limit? Today, we're going to look at why jumping from a standstill to higher than 50 inches is almost impossible. The box jump, which has been made popular in part by CrossFit workouts, has gone viral on the internet, and it's easy to see why. This is Evan Unger, who set the Guinness World Record for a standing box jump at 63 and a half inches. He set the record for single leg jump, too. To find out what it takes, I trained with Unger, learned how to cheat the analog vertical jump test. Perfect, so there's another inch. And talked with a scientist about why some people, like Evan Unger, can jump so much higher than the rest of us. His muscles are capable of doing bigger forces than yours. We flew him out to San Francisco to show us how he jumps so high. So this is ridiculous. <laughs> this is up to almost my chin. Like I can rest my head on this pretty easily. <laughs> yeah. We're at 60 inches, right? So this is five feet, 60 inches, yeah. That's insane. And that's three and a half inches shy of the world record, which you set. That's correct. Right? Yep. Okay, so like how, how, I can't even think about how to do this. What do you do mentally and physically to prepare for and then actually execute a jump like this? Uh, I will train jumps sporadically, but not very often. Um, but a lot of weight training and uh, usually just focused on the lower body. So I'll be squatting three times a week. Uh, and as I get closer, the squats change uh, in variation, in reps, in sets. They get heavier and uh, less reps. Uh, it ends up like making you a lot stronger for a one-time explosive movement, right? Mentally, uh, I think the mental game is just as hard as the physical game. But the problem is like mentally, you can't really prepare too, too much for it. Um, but I find when I'm coming up to the box, I try not to think of anything. Unger trained for a year before he set his record. I didn't have that kind of time, but with his coaching, I got to 34 yeah. inches, Easy. and then 38 inches, Nice. And that's a mic. And then 42 inches. All right, this is 30 inch box, three, four inch plates. We're at 42 inches high. Before I began to really worry about cracking a shin, Unger had me jumping to 46 inches. Yeah! <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Man, you had full hang time on that one. Ah. Oh. The thing is, I'm not technically jumping that high. Because remember, the NFL Combine record is also 46 inches, and I'm nowhere near as athletic as a pro football player. Now, there are lots of different kinds of jumps. There's running jumps, high jumps, triple jumps. But the standing vertical jump is used in the NFL Combine and by sports scientists because it's a good measure of explosive power. The box jump looks amazing. But it's not just pure vertical jumping. It's actually a complex move that builds on top of a vertical jump by pulling your feet up towards your hips. Interestingly, about a century ago, there was an Olympic event called the Standing High Jump. And it was pretty similar to box jumping. This guy, American Ray Erie, was the reigning champion. He once cleared a bar at 65 inches. If he were alive today, he'd probably give Unger a run for the box jump title. But we wanted to know how Unger might stack up against today's NFL Combine jumpers. So he and I both jumped in front of a measuring tape. Oh God, that, <laughs> that was really ridiculous. <laughs> I just like watched him rise past me. As you can see, he out jumped me by a lot. It was hardly scientific, but it looks like he's cruising to nearly three feet. That's almost 90 centimeters. Here's the thing, exactly how high he jumped depends on how you measure it. Do you start from a standstill with his feet flat on the ground? Or the moment before takeoff when he's on his tiptoes? 
Depending on your form and how big your feet are, the difference could be 10 or more inches. Either way, it's a very impressive jump. Like I look at this guy doing the standing vertical jump and I go, my God, what a monster, right? That's biomechanist Jesus de Pina. And my specialty is trying to understand the mechanics of how athletes jump. <sighs> Those mechanics are actually pretty intuitive. The way to get the biggest possible height is to have a big vertical velocity at the end of the takeoff. So how do you do that? Depina says it's all about moving up as powerfully as you can for as long as you can before leaving the ground. Okay, so you would think that you would go and you would crouch yourself, bend your legs a fair amount and be down there and then wait and say, okay, let's go. And then you use your muscles to extend your legs as powerfully as you can to get out from the ground. The problem with that is that when you're down there waiting to start your jump, you're making a force that is sub-maximal. You're just needing to make the force that you need to hold the downward position. And to be able to go upward, you need to make a force that is bigger than that. He says there's an even better way. So what you do is instead of starting at the bottom, you start standing up. So you're standing up and then you relax your muscles completely. So you, your legs turn basically into wet noodles, right? And your gravity is pulling downward, so you go down. As you're using your muscles to slow down this downward motion, you're activating those muscles. You're pretensing the muscles. So at the very bottom point, you have all of your vertical range of motion for the upward motion available to you still, and your muscles are already pretense. It's called the counter movement jump. Unger and I both tried it, and not surprisingly, he jumped way higher than me. I asked Dr. DePino why. He has better muscles. His muscles are capable of doing bigger forces than yours. Basically, this means that he has a bigger cross-sectional area of muscle in the main movers. Really, we're talking uh, quads and glutes. Yeah. If anyone knows how lucrative a solid jump is, it's Joel Smith. He's a coach who runs an online jumping academy for athletes who want to improve their leaping abilities. He watched me jump and offered some suggestions for how to improve. We all know squats, deadlifts, front squat. We think strong legs. Um, it'll help. Uh, I view it as a way to create tension. So right now, if we can create more tension in your legs by getting stronger, you will have the capability to jump higher. So it is possible that I could get better at jumping, but I'll probably never get to Unger's level. That doesn't mean I couldn't have a higher vertical jump. I went to Sparta Science to talk with founder Phil Wagner. From a research standpoint, vertical jump has been associated with performance in a variety of sports. He works with pro athletes, including NFL hopefuls, to post their best vertical leap on an analog measuring device called a Vertec. Using it is simple. Just subtract the highest you can reach while standing from the highest you can reach while jumping. The difference is the height of your jump. Kind of. Because for as easy as the Vertec is to use, it's also really easy to cheat. Just make your standing reach as low as possible. Because you had a lot of elbow damage, right? Right. Wagner showed me how I could add a few inches with a fake injury. Wow, you can't even get close. Let me walk through this thing actually with my short of my shoulder tipped up. My fingers extended, my arm all the way straight. Then I walked through again. No fake injury, fully stretched out. Look at the difference. That 45 seems a lot closer. Yeah, it's a lot closer now. Then I jumped. Great. And jumped again, this time using another trick, some toe bounce, which amplifies the counter movement's lift. There it is, yep. Okay, so how did I do? So what's considered probably average, quote unquote average for an NFL vert would be in the mid 30s, about 35. So you did about a 33 inch vert just there. Look at that. No warm up. A little cheating, no warm up, just casual. But here's the other thing. Scientists can't even agree on the best way to measure vertical jumps. There's the analog vertex, there's video analysis, and then there's force plates, which measure an athlete's force on the ground to calculate the height of their jump. They're harder to cheat. They're also what Wagner's company uses. And thanks to their proprietary equipment, he says they're also far more accurate at measuring a vertical leap. So 14.1 inches. That's half. your first jump. That's half. Yeah. After three average jumps, the force plate brought me back down to earth and more than halved my vertical leap to, wait for it. 15 inches, 
is actually not a bad score, it's real. Now, that might sound like a big difference, but remember, the Vertec isn't very precise. You can cheat it with the arm extension trick, and it's measuring your jump from a flat-footed start, even though your body is fully extended at the peak of your jump. The force plate just uses the speed you leave the ground to determine your jump height. Wagner says the highest any athlete has achieved on the Sparta plate, and that includes pros he can't talk about, is about 30 inches. But he doesn't think we're at the limit just yet. I believe that we're capable of getting up on this, you know, to a 40 inch vertical jump. Really? Yes, and I believe that's strong. And the highest we're seeing right now, as a reminder, 30. is about 29.30. That's correct. It's a fight between gravity and muscle. Drop some weight, and you might float a bit higher. If I lose 10 pounds, am I gonna jump higher? Yes, as long as you don't lose the capability of making force with the same proportion. So it counts as the ratio. Force you can make on the ground, or muscle tension that you can make, divided by body weight or body mass. So the ratio is what counts. So if you can make your body mass be one half, which is impossible, or imagine if you make it be one half, that'd be amazing. The problem is that your capability for force is also one half what it was before, you'll jump the same. Wagner says better nutrition, careful training, and injury prevention could see athletes cruising even higher. I think the true limiting factor is how well can we allow individuals to recover, and that's why monitoring is so important. Right? How do we continue to add capacity on each individual without having a setback? So it's possible we'll see somebody with a greater vertical leap someday. But for now, bear in mind that what some of these athletes are doing is already almost impossible.